The professional we have on stage today is Moshe Yudkowski. He is the president of Disaggregate Corporation, 20 years of experience. He was at Bell Labs and at Intel, the canonical places in our industry. So this guy has been around. He chaired the ECTF's speech technology group. He's the author of the book, The Pebble and the Avalanche, How Taking Things Apart Creates Revolutions. And today, he's going to be talking with us about an approach to artificial intelligence, microservices, and big data. His talk is titled, Victorian Era Microservices, How to Recreate the Gentleman's Gentleman and the Ladies' Companion. Let's give a big Klukon round of applause to Moshe Yudkowski. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, when I uh, uh, last, I gave a webinar on uh, fail to ban and free switch. And Ken Rice, is Ken here? I have not seen the gentleman. Okay, didn't make it? Okay, well anyway, Ken challenged me uh, when I told him the topic of the talk, to if I would appear in Victorian garb. And I said, challenge accepted. And, uh, and furthermore, after I got dressed, I realized that I need to change the way my talk looks. So I'm going to try doing that in a moment, as soon as I can figure out how to get my talk to, oh, here we go. Let's try that. Yes? Nope. How about that? Here we go. Okay. Change the uh, way the slides look to be a little bit more Victorian. So why Victorian era? Why microservices? What am I going to be talking about today? So the first of all, why Victorian era? Uh, when you go back and you think about all those novels you've seen. Hello? Okay. okay. Do I have to start from the beginning? Everybody paying attention? Okay, there we go. All right, you look back to the Victorian era. And in the Victorian era, people had butlers, they had maids, they had gardeners, chauffeurs, and footmen. In business, you had secretaries, office boys, assistants, clerks. The upper class had the gentleman's gentleman, the lady's maid. You also had a valet. You might have a lady's companion. Uh, and all these things are missing today. And what happened is they became too expensive. People became expensive, things became cheap. Um, some people of my generation lived through that transition where there was such a thing as a doctor making a house call and then all of a sudden that vanished and now you go to your doctor and no matter how sick you are, either you go to the emergency room but you don't have a doctor visiting you in the house. All right? So the people became too expensive. But we now have the opportunity to perhaps get around that. Okay? And what's the impetus? And I'm going to try that very dangerous thing, a little live piece of on, uh, online stuff. So give me a second here while I put down my mic. That didn't work. Not only that, I screwed everything up. Give me a second here while I get it back and we're gonna forget the live part. Sorry, everybody. I'm gonna drop the... <sighs> Give me a second so I can get back to where I was. There we go. Back here. There we go. Yeah, 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 don't worry about it. All right, sorry about that. So what I'm gonna do instead is just gonna talk through it because I was sort of prepared for this kind of disaster. And uh, this is a picture from a screen grab. And you see the people sitting in their drawing room in the Victorian era, the actually 1930s Australia. And they're sitting and talking and the phone rings. Now, how many times have you seen this in a movie? The phone rings and what happens? Well, what happens if your phone rang right now? What would you do? You well, you jump, right? And then what do you do? You answer the phone immediately. You are trained to do that. I actually have untrained myself over the years, but 
That's fine, most people are trained to do it. And then what happens, the butler, we see him from the back. In this particular uh, series, his, the butler is named uh, Mr. Butler. Uh, but anyway, the, what he did though, he screened the call for you and let you know whether or not you were supposed to pick up the phone. So that was his job. And so all that barrage, that torrent of incoming junk that you get on your home phone now, assuming you have one, or even the barrage and torrent of junk you get on your cell phone, 99% of it is, uh, is junk. It didn't happen because you had somebody screening it for you. In fact, you had somebody who would answer the door for you and he would screen visitors. And if you didn't want to see that visitor, he would toss that visitor. And you didn't have to interact with somebody who came to your house that you didn't want to see. You didn't have to dismiss the guy who was coming from door to door to sell windows. You would just, the butler would just want to let him into the house. And if somebody came to visit and it wasn't convenient, the butler wouldn't let him into the house. And you'd say, I'm sorry, I'm not at home. The butler would say, I'm sorry, he can't see you now. We come back the next day. All that awkward business gone, that was the butler's job. Which reminds me, did everybody turn off their cell phones? And I have to, hold on a second, let me get my calls done here. Hi. Hello, Mabel. Hold my calls for the rest of the morning. And if somebody calls from the nursing home, tell them to talk to my sister. Another advantage of the services, it wasn't just that they screened the calls, that you had all sorts of services that you just cannot get today. So the idea here is as follows. Uh, given that there's artificial intelligence and whatnot, we should be able to recreate some of these services. And when you turn around, you say to yourself, what is it that I want to accomplish? What is the services that I can create? Where can I make money? You can look to these services. A microservice is a specific defined service, okay? We're not trying to create robots. We're not trying to recreate the butler because we can't do that yet. But there's plenty of things that we can do that are focused services. And then you say, well, why now? So that's because the proliferation, if you go, we're gonna do this actually shortly. Now I should warn everybody that we have exercises in teams here. So you guys are gonna be working together in teams to answer some questions. But before we do that, now that we're talking about affordable, profitable, artificial intelligence services are available today. And here's a contest. Can anybody tell me about a microservice, an artificial intelligence microservice that's a piece of hardware that has been in people's homes since 2002? They made money. It's in millions of homes. First came out in 2002. Anybody want to guess? If you win, um, I forgot I was going to bring you a candy bar. I can get you one later. Thermostat. Thermostat. Okay, that's a good one. What else? Any, sorry, say again. A modem, a modem router. You consider that to be an artificial intelligence uh, service? I'm just, I'm just asking. I mean, it's, good, it's a good, valid point. I had something else in mind. Okay, we're, we have to move forward. Roomba. The little Roomba replaces... Part of the activities of your maid who used to vacuum, it, uh, it, it's artificial intelligence. It's very simple artificial intelligence, but it acts autonomously and has a few simple rules. And it goes around and cleans your house. And it recharges itself. It does everything except dump the, the trash out that it collects. So I consider that to be an artificial intelligence microservice, and it's profitable. Okay, I want to talk to everybody, make sure we're talking about something near and dear to our hearts, namely money. Okay. Let me give you a different microservice which is available today. Um, I should mention that I got these slides because for, um, I was talking to my son-in-law, and those of you who've Googled my last name probably figure out this is my son-in-law and not my son who I was talking to about artificial intelligence, which is a bit of a change for me. So there's a microservice from x.ai, and what happens is, let's say I need to schedule a meeting with James, all right? So James sends me email and says, hey, Moshe, I want to have a meeting with you. And I get email back and uh, I say, I'm gonna loop in my assistant, Andrew. So here's what the, here's what the slides look like. Uh, I'm looping in my assistant, Andrew, who will uh, take care of scheduling the meeting. And then there's an email chain. Here's the meeting. The meeting will be at such and such a time. Uh, the meeting is gonna be called XYZ as per the email that Andrew was CC'd on, and this negotiation goes on, except that Andrew is actually an artificial intelligence service that reads James' replies, 
and decides what's written inside the service and sets up the meeting and does all the negotiation for you. And it doesn't sound like much, but if you're a person at a company that's doing dozens and dozens and dozens of meetings, it's a lot. So that kind of artificial intelligence is available today. Okay, artificial intelligence, here's our exercise. Everybody break up into teams and for the next minute, I want people to be sitting down and uh, scribbling down uh, lists of artificial intelligence services they think would might be useful to create a service. So we're, you break up into a team and then we'll go through it and we'll make sure we've got all the ones. Okay, start now, you got uh, 30 seconds. Do you want to work with me, James? <laughs> of course. Okay, everybody, about another five seconds left. Okay, let's stop now for a moment. Uh, this team here, you have anything you want to tell us about? Speech recognition, excellent. Speech recognition in this case would include recognition, verification that you are who you say you are, and identification, who are you, right? like the difference between looking at your badge and comparing it to who you are and identification saying I'm picking you out of a police lineup. Okay, great. Um, next team down. You guys? We, we have an interactive voice response system that converts sentiment and things like that. Sentiment analysis also from the speech recognition and from the transcriptions, excellent. I'm gonna go all the way onto this side of the room. Let me know if I get too far out of camera range, guys. You can move me back in. Uh, okay, how about in the back of the room over there, last table, you guys got anything? Not right now, okay. What about somebody else? Raise a show of hands. Anybody want to volunteer stuff? Okay, you, sir. Medical diagnosis. Medical diagnosis, okay. Is that an artificial intelligence capability that's available today that you can get commercially? Just asking. Okay, because there are speech recognition services that uh, will try to detect whether your anti-depression uh, medication will work based on the prosody of your speech and the word choices. Okay, this side over here, show of hands, please. Anybody? The side of the room doesn't want to talk to me. Pardon me? Training. Tra and selling. Buying and selling, training, okay. And is that uh, service commercially available? Definitely. Definitely, okay. All right, I'm gonna continue onward. Uh, I have a partial list and I just wanted to bring it to your attention. So there's speech recognition, verification, identification, and also in speech, language identification. Language translation is an artificial intelligence service available commercially from multiple vendors. Intent, what is it you were trying to accomplish? Sentiment, how did you feel about things? Key phrases in your word, and a lot of other things that are available just for speech. And then other things, there's face recognition. You know, can I, can I, are you the person who you say you are, or are you a wanted felon, or are you both, you know, I am a wanted, all right. Image recognition, is this a flower, or is this a tree? Um, it, OCR, which optical character recognition based on it. Have you guys seen the apps that you can get for your phone where you can scan, let's say, a receipt, and then it cleans up the edges, sort of uh, smooths out the wrinkles, and then uh, optical character recognition? Anybody got that on their phone? Yeah. yeah. How, does, how well does it work? Really well? Yeah, pretty well. Uh, then, there, of course, there are meta service. Uh, then there's gait recognition, you know, how am I walking, retina recognition, and other biometrics of that nature that can do personal recognition, AI training, chatbots, and uh, other services like that. If you want to create your own artificial intelligence, you can now go and do the training yourself with toolkits that are available as either a service, let's say, from Amazon or Google or Microsoft, or you can just download them and run them yourself. Okay. We are now going to get to the meat of the talk. Okay, and the meat of the talk here is we're going to do, come up with several different microservices, and we're just gonna brainstorm on it using the artificial intelligence things that we've seen so far, and 
based on, I want, you know, I want you guys to think back to those movies, to the footmen, to the chauffeurs, right? And not only that, I want you to think about something else. Like uh, you, when you park your car in the parking lot, I'm gonna give an old example that I used to give. You park your car in a parking lot, what do you want? You want your car to be there when you get back, right? And in fact, if I'm parking at a shopping mall, it's, it can be a little bit difficult to find. Now, what I get from the people who do um, help me keep my car is like a little noisemaker. And if somebody breaks into my car, it makes noise. But that's not what I wanted. What I wanted was actually for my car to be there when I got back. In fact, what I really wanted was my chauffeur to drop me off and my footmen to accompany me to carry my packages. And I wanted my personal gentleman's gentleman there to help me pick out my clothing so that I looked okay. So that would be actually a service to think about. Go back and think, in the Victorian era, how would this have been accomplished based on the movies you've seen, the science fiction movies the, with time travel, or the detective movies, or the Errol Crowe Perot, or the Agatha Christie, or the, even the Nero Wolf novels. You had people who were in charge of making your life absolutely easier, and it didn't require it. Now pick out a little service out of that. You know, I was talking about over here about holding my calls. You can't get that service from anybody right now. You can't just pick up the phone and say, hold my calls and, you know, route the nursing home to my sister if they call about my parents. You just can't do that. This, all right, now a show of hands. Should I give you guys examples before we start, or you want me to hold off until later? Okay, so anybody who wants, you know, all right, you know what, I'm gonna show you the examples first, give you an idea what I'm talking about, all right? Yeah, everybody's looking at me, be like, what do you, what do you can possibly do? All right. The inspiration, I just spoke about, Bertie Wooster, Jeeves, uh, Peter Wimsey had Mervyn Bunter, Franny Fisher had uh, Dot Williams, if this means anything to you. If you've seen the TV show Downton Abbey, forget what I would think, forget what George Orwell will think. We're not supposed to actually slaughter these parasites. Just think about the servants who were there. Um, and there are innumerable movies. So the exercise is create a microservice in which, um, and the idea is here in order to figure out how to do it, which Victorian character would you want to be? And presumably you don't want to be one of the servants, right? Uh, pick that Victorian character. Are you Earl Coperreau? Are you Bertie Wooster? Are you the guys from Downton Abbey? Uh, what would you like to delegate to a, to a really excellent secretary? a butler, a cook, a maid, a gardener, somebody like that. And if Jeeves, everybody knows who Jeeves is, it was your gentleman's gentleman, or if that were your lady's companion, what would you have them do? So these are ideas to help jog your memory. Okay, we are now gonna break up in teams for a minute. And actually, you know what? We have enough time to do two minutes? You, okay, we got two minutes. So we will now break up, and you guys will have two minutes to come up with a service, a microservice based on the Victorian era, go.
Okay, another 30 seconds, and then we're going to continue. Okay, everybody, we're going to stop now so we can have an opportunity to hear some ideas. If anybody would like to volunteer, otherwise I'm just going to call on you and embarrass you. So those of you who would like to volunteer to give an answer about an interesting microservice, would somebody please raise their hand? Okay, go ahead. Self-driving car, which replaces the chauffeur. It's, it's more than that, James. Exactly. So self-driving cars that you don't actually have to own. And not only that, you don't have to park them downtown. They drop you off and go away. Right. And I no longer need all, I no longer need all the accoutrements that go with owning a car. I just the car shows up and lets me around. Okay, another microservice. Come on, I know you were out there. You people were thinking. Okay, sir. Okay, food expiration management, so that when you go to your pantry, you don't find things from the late 18th century. Okay. <laughs> well, my, actually, everything in my house is from, I, actually, that's not true. Some stuff is from the 1900s. The whiskey, mostly. Okay. Um, any, you, sir. Yes, Announce, announcing the person who comes and enters the room. Go ahead. Well, if you're in an event like this, something that could uh, identify the person or, or uh, name the person who's in the house, and you can announce Okay, very good. So as people enter ClueCon ex Exhibition Hall, their names are announced, just like you would have a, um, a major domo who would announce as you walked into a room. And as a presenter, I would maybe get a little list of people who are sneaking out of the room so I can beat them up later. Okay. Um, somebody else. Okay, I have that person over there. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, go ahead. You two, you guys can fight it out later, but I'm picking you first. Go ahead. All right, so uh, the butler's name is Kevin with an E. Yes. Uh, he would be analyzing all the latest fashion trends and then advising you with an appropriate wardrobe so that I am cutting edge of fashion. Excellent, so you're cutting edge of fashion. Okay. I just want to let you know that Amazon has got a service like that. But, no, seriously, which means there's money in it. So there, there is a, uh, uh, a Hebrew expression which means Baruch Shekhevanti. I am uh, delighted to learn that I have um, reacquired the thoughts of the great and profitable. Not profitable, but I put that in. Go ahead. All right, you go ahead. Your turn. Personal home defense. Okay, James, see? Okay, uh, in the United States, I'm not sure if you're from the U.S., we call those shotguns here, but yeah, okay. Um, is any, anybody else want to, I'm going to pick somebody who doesn't, if you don't volunteer, you might get picked, so now's your chance. All right, go ahead. Uh-huh. Okay, very good. So you get a service where clothes show up. And, you know, you're tired. Everything you need for that, for that day, you don't have to. Uh, okay, how did I choose what breakfast cereal to have this morning? Because I have, you know, a bunch of them. You know what I did? I rolled dice. Literally, I rolled dice. I got six choices that are more or less the same. Roll dice. Oh, number four, pick it up off the shelf, and I'm eating number four. I don't have to spend five minutes deciding what cereal I want to have for breakfast. Now I have to decide what I'm wearing tomorrow. Although, you know, most places won't deliver this, but, you know, I'm sure we can work it out. Okay, anybody else want to volunteer? I'm going to go through a list of things that I had in mind just to give you an idea. Some other services. Okay. Um, here we go. The first thing is coordinating lunch orders. 
You ever do this? You know, hey, let's go out to lunch. I'm going to order food out. And then you spend, you know, 10 minutes calling everybody and sending emails back and forth. There's a friend of mine right now who's trying to coordinate lunch orders for 50 to 100 people for something that's going to happen on Saturday. And so she's doing this by email from people all around, actually, the world uh, who are going to be showing up at this event. Okay, now imagine if you had an artificial intelligence bot that could do that for you. Or for that matter, figure out uh, what restaurant you want to go to. Or we have guests over. You know, some of them are gluten-free, and some of them are allergic to this, and some are allergic to that. How about a little bot that would sort of keep track of that for me? You know, check with my guests. What are you allergic to? And then remember. And then next time, you know, okay. Um, I'd really rather really focus on the content of these slides than how it looked. I mean, I did spend a little bit of time on the look at the slide, as you probably can tell. But how about something that lets me do that service? I mean, that used to be something you would do at large companies. If you wanted to give a presentation, you would hand it off to somebody. And now large companies have decided it's too expensive to have a graphic designer, so everybody sits and makes terrible PowerPoint presentations by themselves. Okay. Um, folding laundry. You know, washing machines are possibly the greatest invention ever made because it means you don't have to take your clothes down to the river and pound them in rocks. And I mean this in all seriousness. The drudgery that it... But what about folding the laundry? I mean, it's not that hard to... You can imagine that there's... You know, you throw the laundry into a machine which then uses artificial intelligence to figure out what's a pair of pants and how it's supposed to be folded and folded for you. It can't be that terribly hard. And then... And here's another example of a microservice. Travel agents. Whatever happened to travel agents? Okay? Were they all killed? I mean, was there a disaster? Did they, you know, like a plane crash at one of their conventions? They're gone. Okay? Companies don't have travel agents. I would like to see microservices centered on travel agents. I'm flying from Chicago to something. It knows I'm a frequent flyer, just like a regular live travel agent did. There's nothing like that. Every, all the stuff that I've seen so far doesn't let you do it. Now, by the way, I mean, there are things like Google Assistant, which in theory will go out and make a restaurant reservation for you. But it's not the same thing as coordinating six lunch orders and having it ordered in. Right? So I mean, some of this stuff is here. The, the first thing on the list is doable. The third thing is highly aspirational. And travel agents is actually you know, highly profitable. And there's probably going to be some niche marketing in there sometime soon. Somebody's going to figure out a decent artificial intelligence to enable travel agency stuff. OK, Victorian. No Victorian novel is complete unless there's a subplot against fighting against evil. So now we're going to talk about the tw evil twins. Everybody ready? OK, another exercise. 30 seconds. What comes to mind when you think of Alexa, which is the Amazon voice-activated device? All right, 30 seconds. Just say, go ahead, quick or maybe even 20 seconds. What comes to mind when you say, Alexa, think of, work on it in Teams, go ahead. Teams? Okay, wait, 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 we're gonna wait until everybody has a chance. Okay. Okay, good enough. All right, start, start calling out. Start calling out, what'd you say? Big brother, okay. Excuse me? Office treatments is for abuse. I'm hearing something about abuse, but I didn't hear the first part. <laughs> Opportunities for abuse, excellent. Okay, go ahead. Anything? Glorified alarm clock. Glorified alarm clock, okay. Personal DJ, excellent. Go ahead, anything else? Anybody else want to add? Family argument, oh, you have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Especially when you have a five-year-old in the house. You know, you visit, all right, anyway. Um, anything? No? Okay. So usually in my house, we used to joke that Amazon was, Amazon as a whole, was our shopping utility. It's like electricity or internet service or water or something. You just call up Amazon and things appear at your door. It's like the greatest thing ever. But that's all wrong. I came to the realization. Alexa is a shopkeeper's assistant. Alexa does not work for you. Alexa works for Amazon. All right? It has a lot of implications. Speech recognition right now can tell, um, not only does recognition, but it can also do, obviously, mood. And it can detect whether you're telling the truth or not. It can detect whether you're stressed. I don't know if that's in Alexa, but it could be there. 
There's no reason why it shouldn't be. It could be in the future. And Alexa knows everything you do. First of all, Alexa certainly knows your shopping habits. Uh, Amazon, I don't know to the extent to which Amazon goes out and buys information about you as a customer, right? Do they know when your birthday is? Do you know when your anniversary is? Do they get that from other marketing? Do they, can they deduce it from what you buy? I don't know. I sincerely do not know the answer, but certainly it's possible. So, in the future, you buy flowers for your spouse. Okay, there's a lot of possibilities. Did you do it because you love your spouse? Did you do it because you missed the anniversary? Did you try to hide that you made some other mistake? And she can tell. You can tell from the tone of voice. Ale you know, Alexa orders flowers for my beautiful spouse, who, by the way, might be watching this video. Hi, dear. Um, or it could be, uh, order flowers for my spouse. Or it could be, orders flowers for my spouse. You know, that kind of thing. So Alexa will be able to tell. And if you think Alexa is going to keep that information to herself, you are wrong. She is going to gossip. The main problem we have with these kind of artificial intelligence systems is they don't work for you. And by the way, I'm a big fan of an Amazon. Don't get me wrong. But you know, Amazon is in the news lately because they are selling recognition, facial recognition to various police departments. Okay, so the thing that I would use to create an excellent service, somebody else is using to create a surveillance. So there's all sorts of the evil twin of the artificial intelligence and all these services is this lack of privacy, impossible lack of privacy. Therefore, I have rules. Okay. Um, I don't trust artificial intelligence devices until I control them completely or until after the singularity. All right. Um, and believe it or not, it's, uh, it is possible because of the cloud-based services I alluded to earlier that it may be possible for you to own your own artificial intelligence system. Sorry, I should have put that up there. Um, and then I have a second rule, which is my household will only retain virtual servants that are both loyal and discreet. Right? Now, I do not have Alexa in my house. I do not have OK Google on my house. I don't have it on my phone. And I do my best to keep my privacy there because I simply do not trust these services. So what can I tell you? I do speech recognition for a living. And yet, I refuse to use some of these most awesome cutting edge services because simply I don't trust them. And that, folks, is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. By my, by my clock, I believe I have two minutes for questions. And you can stop. Am I wrong? No, you are totally right. If you, let's do questions for Moshe here. Who okay. has a question after that wonderful talk? Just raise up your hand real high for us. Right. I'm sure nobody has any questions because I, I can tell. All right. Who wants to challenge him with some yeah, hard? Yeah. Okay. There James, we go. Thank we have you. A I knew James. From James Bode. Here, James. Here, take my take my mic, James. Yeah, well, I'll challenge you there. I, I do use Google, I do use Alexa, and I will continue to do so whilst they deliver things that are useful to me. And I think you can go overboard with this, I don't trust this, and conspiracy, this, that, and the other. As soon as Amazon or Google start doing anything bad, they're dead in the water, and they know that. So um, they're just as, af as afraid as we are, I think. Fair enough. I'm sorry. Wait. I mean, there were, no. This is not lined with tinfoil. No, that's what your question was. Okay. So then the question being, um, do I agree with that? And the answer is no. I don't. And the reason I don't is because I see a qualitative difference. Be uh, let me just give you an example. It's an Internet of Things device. Um, I, everybody heard about that little incident where OK Google mailed a private conversation to somebody else by accident. You heard that one? One, one instant. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But the question is. Uh, right now, Google says they listen to everything. Google says they keep recordings of things. And Google um, will respond to government inquiries and demand that. It's bad enough that your um, old-style phones used to be able to be turned on whether you thought they were on or on hook or off hook. Have you ever been in a secure conference? Anybody here been in a secure conference facility with the old-style desk phones? Gosh, I'm really dating myself. And you'd pick up the phone, and there was a switch in the handset. 
because there was no telling whether even the phone was hung up, maybe it was still alive. And you would have to pick it up, and if you wanted to talk, you had to push, push a switch in the handset to activate the microphone and the speaker. So that's the way, that's the kind of caution and security that I'm interested in. I don't trust the fact that Google has that much information. I don't trust the fact that Facebook has that much I don't use Facebook at all. It's too creepy for me, frankly. Um, and this is live streaming on Facebook. I know that. Sorry, guys. Please don't cut me off. But I think it is too creepy for me. So I don't use Facebook because it's too creepy. It's too much information gathered about me. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong in the sense, OK, now i got to stop. Am I right? so much more damage than I can get value out of them. So that, that's the counter to James. Right, so the counter to James, I'm just going to repeat it for our at-home audience. Uh, there's an asymmetric relationship of power. Google knows everything about you. Facebook, re Google reads all of your mail. Amazon checks all of your purchases. Your ISP uh, sees everything you look at online in the internet. And your phone company always knows where you are. It's worse than your mother, all right? And uh, there's nothing that you can do from a power standpoint to challenge that. And so I leave you with that cheerful thought after this wonderful talk. All right, see you guys.